to be going back to Sheffield and, and going back to Yorkshire and uh, despite it sort of being a step down in league, it didn't feel like a step down, which is why I sort of chose Sheffield United over over exploring the, the championship options. I were away that summer on holiday with Billy Sharp as well, so uh, me and him were both talking, calls going backwards and forwards with, with Adkins while we were away, and we were buzzing to be signing together. It's like, I, I was going through some quite serious financial issues when I were at Sheffield United. I literally just got a text over the summer saying you're on the transfer list, um, uh, and that was sort of while we were taking over, and I just got a text from him, that's all it, all it said. But there was a couple of bad eggs in there as well. This is the Chef United Way podcast within Good Nick and Hal Stewart. Our next guest could operate on the left of midfield or defence, through the middle and even up front. He came into the game the hard way, plying his trade in the non-league while studying and working on a building site, but going on to represent England at sea level, then forging a professional career, taking him through the leagues to the heights of the championship. He played for the Blades during the 2015-16 season. Martin Wolford, welcome to the Chef United way. Thank you very much, Hal. Nice little intro there. And uh, hi, Nick, how are we doing? Yeah, very, very good. Thank you, mate. And uh, most people that we interview on here have finished their career, but you haven't yet, have you? I'm not sure, to be honest. It's up in the air. I, I, was, still, I was still playing part-time, uh, but the level that I was at, it, it just got ended due to COVID. So I'm, I'm on the fence. Uh, it's a, it's a tough, uh, tough decision, to be honest. It's, it's a lot tougher than I was kind of expecting um, to let it go. I've, I've got other things going off in the background that I'm uh, passionate about and, and focusing on. So I thought it was going to be a little bit easier to, to let go, but it, it's been a huge part of my life. So I, I'm not sure is the answer to that. And I'll, I'll see what's there come, uh, come next season. I, I made the decision to go part time um, when I could have still uh, stayed in a full time game. Um, but the club, uh, the club in particular that were interested among a couple of others were, were miles away. Um, and I'm, I'm at the stage of my career that I'm not with, I've, I've got two young girls now, I'm not with their mum, so it would have meant me leave, moving away on my own and I just weren't in the headspace to do that. So I chose to go part-time um, and I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, the, the only downside to, to going part-time is uh, is it takes up all your time, basically because I'm now focusing on my business through the day. Um, I have my girls um four nights a week i train the other two nights and then play on a saturday so it's it just got a lot as well at the same time so but having said that i enjoyed the football and um as i say I, i'm very very undecided of, of what i'm going to do from here mm. it, it is something to consider especially when you do think that you came into the game in, in such a different way and later of course than some people tell us about how you did first get into football because it wasn't the tried and tested path of many no, no, I, th I came from non-league, is, is a long story short. Um, I, I went on trials when I was younger, um, local clubs such as Doncaster, Barnsley, um, uh, amongst a, a host of others um, as, as a childhood growing up. And I, I just got, I just kept getting knocked back. Uh, there were a few little um, uh, bit of bad luck in some, in some instances, badly timed injuries and, and stuff like that. And then there was somewhere I just sort of uh, just didn't perform on the trials for, for whatever reason. And um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd gone, I'd left school, I'd, I'd, I'd been to college and I'd, I'd started working. I was, I was actually a land surveyor working on the building site, as you mentioned, uh, mentioned there. And I was just playing part time, um, sort of semi pro, but. When you say semi-pro, it, it was kind of like back then it was like fifty quid a week, and I was absolutely buzzing off that. Um, and I came, um, I, I came from there, and uh, as we spoke about um, earlier, but we, we um, I went on a trial. Right, I think I was, I think I was nineteen when I signed for York. But even right up to just before then, um, I went on a trial for Stockport. Um, who were in League Two at the time, um, and even then I, I got another no. They took me to Ibiza on pre-season tour as, as the trial, and again it was just another no. So I, I kind of went back to Frickley Athletic that I was playing at at the time, and thought that was that. And then York City came in really, really late for me, and and yeah, they, from from there I, I'm 
forever grateful for that. I know you're a big York City fan, Hal. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really grateful for York because everyone else would just say no. And uh, like I said, for one reason or another, it was just no after no after no. So it gets tough to take as a, as a kid growing up. And I'd sort of got my head around um, football not being sort of the, the path for me. Um, and York sort of changed that direction for me. Uh, before we carry on talking about York, and um, I'll leave you to it after that, <laughs> um, uh, you were studying for, for a degree in civil engineering, is that right? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Um, I was, it was part-time, I was, one day a week I was going to uni as part of the job that I were in, and, and when I signed for York, um, they, they offered me the stay. We were offering me the same money as I was getting paid in a in a much more secure sort of career path. Um, so I, I said, obviously, look, I want to play football, but you're going to have to let me have um, Thursdays off every week because um, I need to. I need another year before I get any kind of qualification. And again, York were more than um, more than willing to do that. And and for the first year, I missed every Thursday training session. So I was uh, working my way towards. Um, the HND, which is sort of two thirds of the degree, but at least at that point I could have picked it back up later if, if football would have not work, worked out. Um, have you decided to pick that back up at any point since? I haven't, you know, and I, and I keep saying maybe I will, um, but at the minute I'm, I'm not. No, I've uh, I am sort of in a similar field. I've I've got a property business that I'm that I'm pushing now, so it possibly would come in handy, but um, but. I don't know whether I'll need it or not is another thing. So um, I'll I'll just see. At the minute, I'm I'm not intending on it, even though I said so throughout my career, I might as well pick it back up while the, the PFA will help towards that. But at the minute, I don't feel I need it. So um, so no. Yeah. Well, yeah. you mentioned that while you were at uni, you worked on a building site. Do you feel, as you think back to that now, that it gave you, or even did you think this at the time, it gave you a greater appreciation for the professional football life. Absolutely, absolutely. When I when I went into York, I kind of put everybody else on a pedestal above me anyway because I'm like I'm this non-league player. These are professional, uh, although York were in the conference, so it was still technically. But I, I was sort of part-time player, and these were professionals. So I kind of put everybody on a pedestal above me anyway. Um, and the fact that I had had to give up a job, um, I'd not sort of come through the ranks of football. I had to, to sacrifice something to go and do it. It was kind of like, well, I'm going to make sure this works now. And, and the only way that I knew how to do that was would just work the hardest. And, and that's all I did at, at, at York. And, and then through the clubs as I went, it was just sort of the, the philosophy, what if I work the hardest? eventually I'll be become one of the best and, and it served me served me very well. Yeah. I mean, I remember Billy McEwen, who was then York City manager, and you mentioned I'm a big York fan. I just want to make this very clear for people watching the Chef United way. I'm a Sheffield United fan, but I grew up in York. I lived in the area. I went to school. In, I went to Bootham School, Martin. So, I mean, I was literally right next to Bootham Crescent. We used to go in half price at half time. And uh, so I, I watched York as a child a lot more than the blades largely because when you're at a school like that you have school on a saturday right so i couldn't get usually by the time school finished to bramble lane in time for a three o'clock kickoff but i could get for the second half of a york game so i used to watch a lot of york when i was a young lad and i was at york six form college as well and that was the sort of time just after that when you signed so i was still in the area and i remember billy McEwen being fairly hesitant to throw you in initially but every time i saw you play for york i thought you were ready so talk me through the initial time at Bootham Crescent and then how it all eventually started clicking, because it really did. Um, I mean, initially, like you say, I, I, well, I can remember coming on from a debut off, off the bench and, and got a few minutes and, and did really well. Um, and then I think, um, I'm not sure if it was the following game, I, like my, my very first start, I, I actually scored and, and sort of then it felt like, right, I'm pushing, I'm pushing for a place now, I'm pushing for a place. I, don't, I can't remember the circumstances why I got the start, whether someone were injured. But I remember the next game then, um, I did get a start and uh, someone got sent off. Um, it was, uh, the goalkeeper got sent off after about, 10 minutes and I was sort of the sacrificial lamb that, that took the uh, 
that had to get um, subbed off. And I were absolutely devastated there, thinking, again, thinking just because of what had happened sort of growing up and being rejected, 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 I'm, I'm sort of putting all this pressure on myself. I'm, I'm kind of even then just thinking, even though I'd got a contract, I, I, I was kind of thinking, oh, I've missed my chance now. That's it. That's sort of thing. So I can remember we like sort of got, get really getting the head down about that. Um, but it weren't too long after that. Then I got back in the team and and sort of things started to be more sort of regular, secure my place. And, and yeah, from, from there I went on to do really, really well, which is which is really, really pleasing because I do a lot York uh, a lot, an awful lot. But like, like I say, I did a podcast for them recently and uh, I sort of made it very clear that I owe them, um, owe them pretty much everything for my career, to be honest, because without them taking that punt on me, um, I wouldn't have gone on to have a, have a, a half decent career like I did. Yeah, yeah, you definitely, definitely did. Um, before we get on to talking about the two thousand nine League One final, uh, Scunny, uh, how did you? How did that come about? Uh, so I was doing really well for York, as we, we just discussed there, and, and naturally uh, Cheltenham came in for me, um, and I went down there, and it, I, it was looking like signing for for them. Um, they will they will League Two at the time. Um, and again, I was absolutely delighted. I, I mean, I was just thinking, right, I'm getting league football this time. So it, it's another sort of uh, huge step and a huge marker for me. Um, but what I didn't know, I, I, oblivious to the fact that York was, um, sorry, uh, Scunthorpe had had their eye on me uh, throughout the season that I were doing really, really well. And having spoken to uh, to Nigel, who it was who signed me uh, back then initially, um, he he sort of he made it clear that they weren't going to make the move. Then they they were sort of letting me see how I progressed at York for another uh, six months to a year. Um, they just still wanted me to continue developing and still getting the games. Um, but the fact that that Cheltenham came in, it, it forced their hand. Um, and I can remember then just just meeting up um, uh, with Nigel and 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 Andy Crosby in uh, in a service station and uh, and having a good chat. And from there, it weren't long after till I signed. That season, I signed, signed the start of the season, and, and then we got we got promoted at the end. So it was sort of a whirlwind, um, few years, including York, but in particular a year a year going from there because I, I went from non-league, I went from York in in the conference um, to League One, which in itself was, was a huge jump um, and something that we're obviously delighted with. And then from there to get promoted to the championship, it was just it just all happened. So fast, and the memories of that season just just sort of it, it just seemed to go past in the blink of an eye. Um, and we we did really well. Like the good thing about Scunny, well, we were, we were always the underdogs. We had a, a small squad. Um, it it kind of picked itself, but there were some some sort of competition for places at the same time. Um, and yeah, we were just the underdogs, and and we went. And I can remember sneaking into the playoffs and I mean sneak we we were uh we were losing uh, the final game of the season um which which meant we were out of the playoffs which meant we weren't making it um and, and one of the lads uh, Cliff Burns scored a, a last minute header to to get us uh, that draw that point got us into the playoffs so even going into the playoffs we were still the massively the underdogs we we were sort of miles behind the, the sort of um top uh, top of the playoffs so no one expects us to go anywhere, but we just use that to our advantage, and we, we just we were just sort of yeah riding riding the wave really, to be honest. And and as I say, to, to finish there in that in that stadium, uh, I mean for me, like uh, nothing could compare, especially that that sort of as I say, the, the few years that, that led up to that, I was I'd gone from building site to scoring the winner at Wembley. It, it doesn't happen, so yeah. I were on cloud nine. I bet. That's magic. It's just amazing. You couldn't make it up. You couldn't write it. And if you did, no one would believe it. Absolutely incredible. And of course, Bristol City, Millwall, you know, good clubs. And then we'll get to our team, Sheffield United in 2015. So how did that move come about, Martin? Um, well, I was, um, I knew I was leaving Millwall. I'd, I'd, I'd served my time there. My contracts were up um, and I still had... Um, a, a bit of interest from the championship, um, but I was uh, Chef United were um, were interested when when Clough was still there, 
And Sheffield United for me is 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 a club that I obviously growing up relatively local. I look I'm looking at the club and I'm thinking one it gets me home, um, which I've been away from sort of friends and family for quite some time. But the the two for me that the main thing I'm looking at the club and I, I knew the club had it in it to do what it did. Unfortunately, it would were after kind of after I'd left, um, but I, I knew it always had the potential to do that, and I, I wanted to be a part of that. Um, and then uh, Clough left that summer, um, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking, right, well, that's kind of deal off, and I need to look at other things. And, and then it, it just happened to be uh, to be Adkins that that took over, and, and sort of having known him from York and having sort of success under him at York, uh, at Scunthorpe, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and then seeing sort of what he did at Southampton, it seemed like the perfect sort of comparison. And I'm thinking, right, I want to be a part of that. I were away that summer on holiday with Billy Sharp as well. So uh, me and him were both talking and and sort of calls going backwards and forwards with, with Adkins while we were away. And we were buzzing to be signing together because we were, we're mates and, and we were before that friends through other other teammates. So, I mean, we, we were we were buzzing and, and I was looking at it thinking that this is the perfect move for me. Like I say, it gets me back home to my family and, and to be joining such a, a great club with huge, huge potential. Uh, as I say, it, it happened. It just didn't happen when I was there. But so... I mean, but I could see that, and, and you could always see that. You could see that that sort of Sheffield United had been this sort of sleeping giant, giant for a few frustrating years in League One, and it, it would only a matter of time. It, it, I, I, like for me, it was just sort of bad timing, and and it, it didn't work out. But um, I, I'd like to look back of of that. There, there were, there's a lot of good memories come out of that for for a start. There's, there's some things that I'll, I'll touch on in a minute, but. Um, I can like remember like it was yesterday signing and, and going around and walking around the stadium and and things like that. It was it was as um, it, it was as a big of, as much of a big of a deal for me as it was any of the other clubs. And like I said, it, there's been sort of the, the one Millwall in there in Championship, Bristol City, which is a, a big club. So to be to be going back to Sheffield and, and going back to Yorkshire and uh despite it sort of being a step down in league it didn't feel like a step down which is why i sort of chose chef united over over exploring the, the championship options mm. that that's some very good stuff that you just said about chef united so a lot of chef united fans are going to be very very happy with what you've said uh, but looking back on your time at bramall lane um like how did you see it go obviously it wasn't the most successful of seasons uh for the club uh, how did you see your time at, at Bramall Lane? Um, frustrating and disappointing, um, to, to name just, just a few. Um, I signed um, I signed late in uh, in pre season, and the, the frustrating thing for me there was is, is that I kind of knew it was happening for for a while. I knew it. I knew it was happening before before the team went back for pre season, and it was a few weeks after that when I finally got. Um, finally got the deal done and to be honest I'd that that couple of weeks I'd underestimated it was the first time where I'd not had a a proper pre-season like right from the beginning and, and I, I think I struggled from that to start with I, I, I was behind the lads in terms of pace uh, and being up to speed right from the off and to be honest I struggled I struggled to catch up um and before you know it in pre-season, especially when you've missed uh, two or three weeks at the start, before you know it, the season's here and I, and I weren't quite ready. And, and do you know what? That, that, that is down to me because I, 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 looking back now, I should have I should have done more to make sure I was ready going into the season. And then kind of once the season started, it was kind of like I was chasing my tail a little bit um, because I'd... I'd been I'd been dragged at half time in in the the league cup game the the, the cup game that before the season starts and and that hit me quite hard actually because I I always think there's a bit of um, I always think that's a tough uh, it's a bit of a harsh thing to do to a to a player I always said if I went into management I'd at least give it five or ten minutes into the second half just just to let somebody kind of prove themselves but the the thing is when you're when you're not 
up to the pace, like the first thing that you, that goes if you're not fit enough is your brain. It's, it's not even your legs, it's your things. So you start making tired decisions and, and that's what we're doing right from the off at Sheffield United. And the more you start, the, the more you do that, the harder you're trying, but then the more sort of, the more the decision making goes out the window and the more you, you continue to make sort of bad decisions. So it, it would always, it would a scramble from the off for me to, to get up and then I were in and out of the team um, and then it, it just repeats itself. So when you go into the team, you're trying that little bit harder, you're trying too hard and, you, and you're not, you, you kind of play, you, you're not just sort of playing your game, nice, relaxed and, and just playing and, and enjoying the game. You, you've got it on your mind all the time. And you're thinking, right, I need to prove it. I need to prove it this time. So you're trying and, and you overthink things and, as I say, it just becomes that repetitive cycle of, of trying to prove yourself. You, you're slightly off with your fitness because you've not had the run of games, and it, it's it's a it's a it's a hard, it's a tough position uh, position to be in because you need to go in there and you need to like sort of be be, um, be one of the best players in order to secure your place, and you know that as a player, but it's quite. It's quite challenging because you like I say you're slightly behind in fitness, and then you you're overthinking it, trying to prove yourself. So it's, as I say, it's, it's a really difficult position. And that was the first time I'd really found myself in that, in that position after quite a few years of, because like I say, even looking back, right back to the York days when I first got it, I, I did get into the team quite early on and then I got a run of games. Um, and it, it, that's, that's kind of everything. It's, it's um, getting the run of games is, hugely important as a player because you get right up you don't get to your full match fitness till after a few games I, I don't care how hard you work on a training ground it's not the same tempo as when you're when you're out there playing the game and it's difficult it's hard to replicate and then as i say because you're slightly off the pace you're not performing at your best so then you don't force your way into the team and it just keeps going round. um and yeah that that's that pretty much sums up the, the whole season for me and and it, it would get into the end and I was trying to harder and harder just to sort of make up for it and as I say that the harder you try the the less relaxed you are and the less like you you're actually playing the game that makes yeah. so much sense so much sense because there's been so many players in the past that sign late and then kind of don't start the first game and then it takes them a few games come on for a, as a sub a couple of games and then eventually you see that they're getting up to up to the pace but yeah i can completely see that and i don't know about you hal but there's so many similarities there from what dean hammond was saying as well spot on i was about to bring that up so martin dean kind of summed his time up in very similar ways i was wondering did you ever talk to dean because it would have been perhaps interesting if you two had shared how you were feeling inside because you might have both found a bit of common ground do, do you know what you <laughs> you don't open up like that as a player it's mm -hmm. it's only now that i could probably speak with if you'd have been asking me at the time my answer would have probably been clouded to say the least like i, I probably would have like sort of shirked around that a little bit and mm -hmm. and sort of trying to be, and that's just a sort of a manly macho thing i guess you, you're not wanting to admit to yourself that that is the case that you're struggling a little bit with confidence that you that you, that you kind of um that you are struggling a little bit like to to kind of get back to to you you're not feeling yourself on the pitch you're trying to uh, it, it's it's not an easy thing to sort of admit and the changing room's sort of a strange place because you you trust you trust the lads with everything but it's still not a place where you really open up about sort of mm. certain things like in in the way that you that you should really but but so no, I mean, I, like obviously spoke to spoke to Dean on like on on totally different um, topics and things like that. But never to the to the point where we'd sort of um, open up in in that way to say, look, I'm struggling here. Like, how are you? <laughs> you, you just don't do it, and you should really. You, you, yeah, I think it would have made a difference because we now know he was having an awful time and he was very unhappy, and he didn't want to let that on to anyone. And uh, he kept it all inside and it actually really took its toll on him. And we were sad. We were very sad hearing that because I think as fans, you literally just look at the physical ability of a footballer. You don't ever think about they might have had a bad night. They might not have got any sleep. They might have problems going on at home, whatever. They might have had a terrible drive getting to the ground. You do not think of 
any of that. It is literally just, can you do it at three o'clock on a Saturday? Uh, exactly. And, and one of the things for, I, I, again, to open up, I'm not probably, this probably isn't exclusive on a podcast because I've never opened up about this. Like, I, I was going through some quite serious financial issues when I was at Sheffield United. As the, that might surprise you. I can see that on your face there. And yeah. It surprises you. Yeah. But at Fleetwood, the, uh, uh, sorry, at Fleetwood, it all came out a little bit more down the line. But I, I just found out that, um, that all my savings that I put away and give to a financial advisor, he'd lost a lot, like everything. So there were that that's sort of playing on my mind. And again, back then, I probably... I probably wouldn't have admitted that it that it would affect me as much as it, as as much as what it was. I would always kind of like, oh yeah, but the, like playing the game. If anything, like playing the game helped me take my mind off that. But at the same time, I think yeah, I probably weren't in the right the right headspace to to be doing things as well. And that that's possibly kind of like you say. I mean, fans in particular, um, they, they're just looking at you on the pitch. Is he playing well? No, like that's it. That that's as black and white as it is. Like so, then you have a run of of, of bad games, and it's like, oh, he's he's, he's a crap player. Like you, you can go from sort of being having a bad game, and it's been all right. All right, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But you start to have a run of bad games, and mm. and like I say, when then it drags out to being pretty much a season where I underperform. Like there might have been one or two glimpses in there, but I, like even for myself, I'll hold my hand up and say for the majority of the time, I was massively underperforming at, at, at Chef United. Um, and when it drags out to that long, the, the fans are, are, are in the rights to, to sort of have their opinion of, of you as a player. And it's always going to be a bad one, but, but sort of no one really looks at what's happening sort of behind the scene it's just it's just like the rest of life doesn't matter you you are getting paid to play football so you should be performing and um uh, and and it's just not the case you like things affect you in different ways no matter what it is and the the, the thing is for me like I, I will always go out there and and try my hardest and that that unfortunately for me is what i were doing at chef united i was trying my hardest at the time but as i say when you're sort of slightly off the pace when you're overthinking things trying harder mm -hmm. sometimes makes it worse so it's 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 really it, it was a difficult time for me as well at Sheffield United which which really disappointed me the, the saving grace for me which I, and I don't know if this is the case with Dean the saving grace for me is I was back home with friends and family so I, I did have that sort of exit um whereas if if that had have happened at some of the other clubs where like Millwall or or Bristol for example when it when I was living away from uh, from people like kind of ju just me and the missus I had no sort of real escape um, fr from anything whereas when I was at Sheffield I did I had my friends around me and and you can go and take your mind off things um, uh, and that's what I think that were the, the sort of saving saving grace for me all the time but it was a really difficult season to take to be honest and I, I came away from that disappointed more than anything with myself um, having finished the season but then the, the disappointing thing from, from me that weren't my fault after after that is because the damage were already been done. Like I sort of analysed the season and thought, right, well, I, I put a big part of it down to the slow start that I had and, and not being ready for, for pre-season. So I went away that summer and grafted, like the hardest I'd ever grafted in any off-season. And I was just like, right, I'm going to prove a point. Like I knew the fans had not taken to me. Um, I, I knew I had a, a hell of a lot to prove to, to Sheffield United and the Sheffield United fans. So I, I'd gone away and thinking, right, I'm going to do that. Um, and the, the toughest thing to, to take from me was I literally just got a text over the summer saying you're on the transfer list. Um, uh, and that was sort of while they had taken over and I just got a text from him. That's all it, all it said. So I'm like, right. So then you start speaking to your agent and thinking, right, but pre-season won't, won't closing in. And it, and it was just a case of, well, you're going to have to just sit out and, and wait and see what other club, other options are there. So I thought, right, well, let me just try and change some opinions here. So I went back into training and, and unfortunately, um, Wilder's as a Sheffield United fan, which I, I mean, I don't know if that played a part, but it, I weren't changing his mind. There were, there were no, there were no change in his mind whatsoever. He, he made his mind upright from the start, or, or 
fortunately for me initially um dean Hammond was actually on his hit list more than i was so while he was dealing with that for the first week or so when we went back into pre-season everything were, were okay and, and just getting on as normal but then he got D, dean out of the picture and and i must have been the next on the list because uh pre-season tour came round. um I, w- I was the only one that just got left behind um, just got made to train with the kids, which I knew happened in the game. But when it's happening to you, when you're not a bad egg, you're not doing anything to disrupt anything, you're just wanting to work hard and better yourself, that again were a really tough thing to take. Um, and then I'm sort of uh, half and half training with the kids as and when. Um, and then when the lads came back, I'm thinking, right, at least I've got someone to train with now. Things are still not not happening. A few things had happened while while the club were away. Um, and Oldham had come in for me, but at the time Oldham was struggling financially. So I'm, I, I knew I knew a player that were there um, that I played with before, and he weren't getting paid. And I'm not in the best financial situation anyway myself, so I'm thinking I can't go to a club that's not pay, paying its players. But I think that sort of annoyed Wilder even more, to be honest, because he's wanting me out the door, and I'm refusing. I'm refusing deals. Um, so I, I think he was really, really annoyed coming back from um, pre-season tour that I was still knocking about the building, to be honest. Um, and for, for the following week, it was really difficult, to be honest, because I weren't even allowed on the grass, which is frowned upon, um, to say the least. Um, but again, it, it would just, like I say, I, I just, I, I would try my hardest to get out at this point as, as well but it, it had to be the right thing for me as well like that that's the other thing that sort of fans don't necessarily see it's like you're not just going to go to the first sort of the first club let's say Oldham were the first one there and I, I knew they were struggling like there were uncertainty there and it just weren't from weren't for me um so as I say to go through all that eventually like I say um I did get um I did get out and I did go to Fleetwood, but um, but yeah, that that period after the summer, in particular, were were a really tough thing for me to take because the other thing was as well is I'd gone away and, and grafted all summer, and then I weren't part of any preseason games. I weren't part of preseason tour, so I, I fell behind again because I'm I'm just training with kids or or on my own at times again, and it had sort of gone back to where I didn't want to be the the, the season when I signed. So. All the all the hard work sort of got undone because you, you, it's it's really really hard to, to kind of replicate the, the the games and the training that you're doing when you just sort of like I say whether you're doing it with kids or or whatever it's it's just not the same as the first team stuff. So that that was a real that was a real low point for me was like I say finishing the season disappointed um, and and hard on myself about that. But then felt like I was sort of attacking it in the right way to to kind of try and make amends, and then just not to be given any any sort of shot that were were quite tough actually. That was that was quite tough. Yeah, that sounds that sounds awful. That as you can see from mine and Hal's mm. uh, lack of saying anything really. Well, it's, it's we hard didn't know to, hard to hear. We didn't know any of that was going off in the background, and you just get reports in the press about these players are transfer listed, and then the next thing you hear is they've gone. And you just don't think about any of the mental anguish that's going on. Of course, as you've mentioned, you've got your own issues to think about, personal issues as well as financial issues. You can't just jump at the first club that offers you an opportunity because it might not be right for you. And I'm just probably thinking you are one of the only people, maybe you and Dean Hammond, that that sort of didn't really welcome the return of Chris Wilder like we all did as fans because he didn't see the best of you. Sheffield United fans didn't see the best of you. And, and of course, as you mentioned, he's a Sheffield United fan, so he did probably have some of his mates telling him, yeah, this guy didn't do it last season. And I think that's, it's a shame that Chris wasn't sat with me in Booth and Crescent when I saw you mm-hmm. score eight goals that first season. And I know it was League Two, but this was League One, and you'd already done it in the Championship. So I knew, and I'm going to stop just going on, on this is not a loving, I'm just, I felt like, <laughs> given, it, given another chance you could have done it for Sheffield United and you would have changed opinions. That's how I felt. And I was hoping you were going to come back second season. The main reason was I'd said how good you were and I wanted to look clever. Well, I mean, for me, like, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted a chance to, to prove that. So it, were, it, it hurt just getting a text. Like I say, I'd, I'd, I'd know 
I know a bit of opinions like good or bad about uh, about Chris Wilder. Like I'd never met him. I'd never I'd never come across him like in within football prior to that. I'd never heard sort of any stories, good or bad, about how he is as a manager and how he how he how he is. So. Like I say, when when he when he took over, I had no sort of. Um, it, it would disappoint. It's always disappointing when a manager gets sacked that you've been playing for because the the managers sort of take take the brunt of of everything that's that's going on on the pitch. So it's always difficult, especially um, as I say, I, I'm, I'm I'm sure Nigel doesn't get sort of um, highly regarded at Sheffield United, but I'd had I'd had success under Nigel. We got promoted from from League One to the Championship with. With Scunthorpe United, that's that's not the the size of club that, that Sheffield United is. So, I got um, a really good impression of of that. So to see him get sacked anyway was 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 disappointing um, from a personal point of view. Um, and then, like I say, when when the new manager comes in, when when Chris Wilder comes in, like I say, it was just a case of right, okay, then I've got a new manager to a fresh start, and I, I've just got to prove to him that that I'm I'm sort of worthwhile having at the club. Um, so, uh, as I say, then for for that to see the sign, and then a, a week or so later, however long it was, just to get a text message before even meeting him, um, it's kind of like right, that's that's disappointing. Okay, it is what it is. I'm on the transfer list, but I'm I'm likely to be going back training, so I just wanted a wanted a chance to prove that, and I, I just never got a, a chance to to prove anything. And in fairness, um, in fairness to to, to to Chris, like he, one of the things that I'd, I'd say that that Nigel didn't do well at, at Sheffield was was to clear the ranks when when he came in. It was a huge squad. It, it accumulated um, not just the previous managers but the previous previous managers uh, players. Mm-hmm. And it's true. N- Nigel being Nigel is 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 nice. He's a nice guy, um, and I, I guess I, I guess that's where. Um, where Wilder dealt with that better was to just be ruthless. But when you're on the other end of that ruthlessness, it's mm. it's tough to take. Um, especially like I say, with how it had come about and and without just getting a um a, a shot whatsoever, um, w- without getting any preseason games, um, he, he gave me one kind of late on when when basically it was just a, a token, like I knew I went out the door by that point and, and it gave me a few minutes against um, Barnes, I think it was. But um, but as I say, it, it had already been set in stone that, that I were out the door. And it, like I say, it was just really tough to take, not to get a chance to prove to everybody why that why I, I had come from the championship and, and why I'd been playing regularly in the championship prior to that. I wanted to prove that at Sheffield and, uh, and as I say, going back right back to the start, I always knew that looking at Sheffield United as a club, they always had it in them to do what they've they've, they've gone and done. And I would have loved to have been a part of that. Um, so yeah, it, it's disappointing for me that it that it sort of happened after I was there. But I've no hard feelings about that. It's just disappointment from the from the sense of not getting to to prove that the the poor season wasn't me it was sort of a, a lesser version of what i could do so that that was kind of the, the difficult thing for me it, it's interesting you say about chris wilder's kind of hit list because he he also on his hit list was two other players which were paul coops and uh and kieran freeman as well they both got transfer listed but actually got given a, an opportunity unlike yourself and they became kind of recent legends didn't they Hal? oh main mainstays yeah Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe they owe a little bit to me for clinging on for for as long as I did in the, <laughs> during preseason. But uh, yeah. but no, and, and you know what? Like that's that's the thing because the the season that we had, as, as disappointing as it was, like we had good players. Like we all underachieved. Like for, for, as a, as, a, as a team, we we underachieved. And then, uh, as I say, you, you've got players there that have that have gone on to be sort of club legends and it's it's great to see and like I say I mean obviously I would have loved to have been a part of that um but as I say it, it happens and, and I've only got myself to blame for for sort of the poor season that I have I don't I don't sort of 
try and make excuses for that. There's there's things that I could have done, as I say, getting off to a slow start and and not sort of realizing early enough that it, it was due to sort of being off the pace slightly. Like I could have I could have gone out there and I could have uh, I could have brought myself up to pace um, uh, on myself. So there's only myself to blame for that and. Like I say, mentally and stuff, everything going off outside the the thing, it's it's down to me to handle that and and not let it affect my game, and and unfortunately it did. So, um, like I said, there's there's nothing there from me in any kind of animosity or anything like that. There's of course there's disappointment in the in the season that I had there, and um, and the, like I said, the, the only tough thing to take is is just that I really really want to prove myself and didn't get a shot. It's nice to hear, th- not nice to hear, but also nice to hear um, that there are other things that were affected because, like Hal said earlier, you just don't get that. You just don't get that when you're just watching someone for 90 minutes on a football field play their game. You don't see all these things that's going on in their lives. And to be honest, I would have loved to have seen Chris Wilder um, give you that chance because I think you would you would have took it. No doubt about it at all. I was gonna give it every. I was gonna give it my all. That's that's one thing I had in my in my head that I would, I would determine to come back and and just give it everything that I'd got. And as I said, I'd I'd, I'd done it before in in the championship, so I just wanted to to prove that. And I just wanted to to show that to people. But um, but yeah, and like I say, I, I mean, I look back now, and and as I say, looking at, at possibly what what Nigel should have done when he came in. Um, to what Chris did, uh, unfortunately, I was just one of the ones that that were part of the uh, the previous manager's sort of um, recruitment, and he were wanting to clear the books of that. and And I get it; it's part of football. Unfortunately, you're just a commodity, which is which is one of the the sort of downsides in in football as as a player. You you just um, you you're sometimes not seen as as the person you're seen as, mm. as literally just the, the player and the and, and the asset. And if you're no longer an asset, then you get moved on. Um, and like I say, it would just as well with it being the first time that I'd really experienced that in my career, it was were, it were tough to take. Yeah, I can imagine. Are you ready for the difficult question, Martin? Yeah, yeah, fire away. All right. So at the end of that season, the Scunthorpe game, there was what we now refer to as the infamous lap of shame. Uh, that you all took at the final whistle. I was still there. I don't know, Nick, if you were one of the 2,000 or so that remained inside Bramall Lane. It was yeah. it was toxic. It was hostile. And unfortunately, Martin, at the end of that, it was reported by some that you made the V sign to fans at the end of the season during that, that lap. Can you tell us what really happened there? It weren't during the lap. It was um, I got subbed about 20 minutes from the end and... Uh, the twenty-five thousand Chef United fans would give it the uh, give it a sarcastic um, cheer at my uh, at my removal, um, and um, being there, being in front of the Scunthorpe United fa- uh, fans as well, and it definitely weren't the two fingers. It was it was a thumbs up, and in all honesty, it was a bit of a sarcastic thumbs up in return to the sarcastic cheering that that were going off, but. Um, it definitely weren't the, weren't the two fingers. Um, I can hand on heart say that that is the case, and that is the honest truth. Um, there was, a, as I say, there, there was a bit of uh, sort of uh, sarcasm in the in the thumbs up, uh, and I, I probably shouldn't have even done that. Um, I regretted it instantly, especially when I got back to uh, back to my uh, phone and, and saw my Twitter account absolutely blowing up with abuse from. Uh, from the fans that did think that I'd stuck the twos up. Um, and I can remember after that, we had the, the end of, of season do, um, that just weren't a nice thing to be a part of in itself. But after the season that had been there, it's kind of like, no one really wanted to be there. It just sort of, we had a team now outranged afterwards. No one really fancied doing that. Um, and I can remember uh, speaking to Andy Crosby afterwards and saying, "Look, what do I do? Do I do I put out on Twitter an, an apology for that and explain that it weren't it weren't what what it's being perceived as, or um, what do I do?" Um, I, I was quite distraught actually, because like I say, I was getting absolute dog abuse on on Twitter after after the game, and um, as I say, instantly regretted uh, regretted sort of reacting in any way, uh, let alone. Um, it certainly wasn't the way that it had been perceived by the by the sort of other end of the stadium. Um, 
but he just said no just just leave it it'll, it'll die down um and just come back next season and, and as i say that was part of the reason leaving after that day is again that that i'd sort of got a bit between my teeth to, to sort of right i have I'm really got some making up to do here so um but and, and that that in itself I, I do wonder if if that in itself had a I played any part in in sort of how I got trapped when I when I came back. Uh, I look at it like I say I know Wild is a Chef United fan, and if if he's been offended by by that in the same way that some of the fans didn't think it was what it was, then then maybe there, there might have been something in there. But um, I can hand on heart say that it weren't it weren't two fingers. Um, I would never be that disrespectful as um, as sort of no matter how sort of. Uh, disappointed angry frustrated i was um it, it certainly weren't that it was just the the, the 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 accumulation of the whole season um being sort of embarrassed in front of the chef united uh, chef uh, in front of the scunthorpe united fans sorry mm. um as well uh, that that played a part in it and, and to be like say boo, booed off sort of sarcastically cheered off by uh when when uh by your home team when they're making the sub to take you off it's uh it's tough. Um, it's tough, and like I say, it's, it was just a heat of the moment thing. Just to sort of, I was just like, oh, cheers. I don't um, remember that at all, Nick. Do you? Because I mean, that's why I said I thought it was a lap of honour, and I'm only basing that off what people have told me because I don't remember it at all. And it was only in doing this research that it that it came up. And I'm in a way, I'm sorry to bring it back up because you say Andy Crosby said it'll die down. Here we are, six years later, bringing it back <laughs> up. Uh, but Nick, do you, do you do you remember it at all? No, not at all. Okay, good. It's not I, just me. It's not I as infamous as mine. Game. It's not as infamous as, as you may feel because if Nick and I don't recall it and we were both at that game and I had to look it up and someone told me it was during the lap of honour, so I apologise. I thought it was. But yeah. Yeah, in, in fairness, there, there were some fans on Twitter that were saying it like it, it weren't it weren't too it was a it was a thumb. Because I did uh, I, I think I did comment back on something. Um and uh and as I said, there were there were one or two in amongst the, the hundreds of other comments that were getting there, there was like the odd one or two saying oh, i did actually see a thumb um so yeah I, it's one of those things and, and to be fair if i'd have if i'd have put something out on twitter there i would have probably sort of shirked around the fact of it there being any sarcasm in there and saying oh no it was just thumbs up um, but it wasn't there were, there were a bit of there were a bit of that in there but it, it weren't it definitely weren't meant in any as, as disrespectful as sort of the twos, um, you know, the, the twos would be. But um, I shouldn't have done it anyway. I it was petty. I, I just reacted um, to, to it was just the the bubbling up of a whole frustrating season, and and to to kind of go off there in front of your your old club that you you're highly regarded in, and, and you sort of getting. Um, yeah, you're getting that from your own fans. It was just a little bit. It, it was tough, and I, I just reacted, but. It, as I say, I can hand on heart say that it weren't two fingers. Mm. That's uh, that's nice to hear. Anyway, and at least we've given you some <laughs> sort of platform to um, to tell the fans that obviously that wasn't the case. Um, so so that's all good. I've got a quick question. We asked this Dean Hammond, uh, but this is the last question that's going to be negative. How did you? What, why did you feel that it didn't work for uh, Sheffield United that season? Not not just yourself. I mean everybody because it wasn't just you there were a lot of players that they kind of didn't perform as we kind of expected the the only answer i can probably give there is, is to reference it in, in terms of my time at scunny where as i said we had a a tight-knit group of players the, the the starting 11 more or less picked itself but we had good players there challenging that to, to come in um if and when uh called upon so there were always sort of competition for places and I do look at when I came into Sheffield United, the squad was huge. It was kind of a mess of, um, kind of, like I say, not just the previous manager, but a couple of uh, managers ago that like there'd been a turnover of managers. And it, it kind of like, in all honesty, it was a little bit of a, a toxic changing room because you had sort of that many players. And you, you get it in every club, don't get me wrong. If players aren't playing, they want to have a moan about it. So it's like, oh, I, sh I should be playing. And, um, and you get the negativity coming out um, and uh, and things like that. And I, I just think there were too many in and around um, in and around the changing room, and that, that purely down to more than likely um, down to just not being playing. But because there were that many players not playing, 
in the changing room, it's kind of like, um, yeah, the, the negativity. I mean, because as well, that if you've got a couple of young players coming through, you don't you don't usually get from them because they're quite sort of um, they're quite pleased to be there anyway, and they're pushing, and it's part of their sort of development. But when you've got players that think they deserve to genuinely deserve to be in the in the team and and possibly are good enough. Um, you, you, they're the ones that can be more negative, um, and and then as well, like the other thing is, again going back to uh, going back to Scunny is when you get when you're playing with the same players week in week out, you get the links, you get the you get the um, you get the bonds all over the all the uh, all over the pitch, and you get used to what runs certain players make. You know where you're expected to be if other players have got the ball, and and you just sort of develop this. Um, understanding of of where you need to be and what your job role is within that um and what what to expect from your other teammates and when there's such a big squad and turnover of players trying to keep everybody happy in and out of the team it, it it never gels quite as well as um as what it should um and yeah i mean there, there was a couple of bad eggs in there as well which were which were frustrating for me um, who 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 were the bad eggs <laughs> i knew you were gonna say that <laughs> really <laughs> Um, ah, you can't make. You don't have to say. I was only joking. Tell us after. You can tell us. After. <laughs> no, oh. no, no. You don't. You don't have to say it. At all. <laughs> just all give right. us the. Just give us the initials. <laughs> <laughs> just give you the the, the surname that I. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the first Actually, one. that goes on to my next question. I was just going to ask, uh, what was the changing room like? Was it was it a good one? Were there some good guys in there as well? And, yeah. and did you did you have some good friends at United as well? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's some good uh, there were some good guys in there. As I say, I, I signed with, with with Billy, who was who was obviously a club a club legend there, and uh, me and him uh, were, were very close anyway. So we would always sort of um, we were always roommates on away trips. So I'd, I'd sort of build that relationship anyway. I had that there. Um, there were a couple of players that um, I'd already played with. I'd already played with uh, with Brayford um, and uh, and, a, and a few of the others. Um, so, so that were already there. Um, so you did, yeah. You had you had some really good. You had the makings of a really good, a good team in there. Uh, as I say, it was just a bit stretched because, I, like I said, it, there was a couple of uh, a couple of bad eggs in there. And, and like you say, once you get once it gets to that sort of the negativity in a changing room, it, it it's sort of it's contagious. It's it's like when when things are going well, and 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 that's probably why sort of teams go sort of and, and get back-to-back -back promotions because if you've got the positive you've got the momentum and you're keeping that going then it doesn't phase you who you're coming up against but when the negativity is trying to sort of um creeping into the changing room it's it, it sort of it brings everybody down and as i say, i think there were just there were just too many um there that like i say were, were just probably had a case that, that ability wise that the men there might have been a case for them to fit into the team some somewhere somehow, but um, when you're not, it's easy to just point fingers and and, uh, and blame other people, blame, blame other players, um, blame the manager, blame this, that, the other, whatever your excuse is. But it just never does any any good for the team. Um, and and there were there were quite a lot of that um, when 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 I first uh, first came. And, and as I say, I think. Um, I think, like I say, in fairness to Wilder, that is what Nigel should have done: is 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 cleared some of the ones out that that were never going to be um, sort of part of his team, rather than trying to keep too many players happy. You keep your main ones happy and and let the other ones go, and 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 that was sort of yeah. I think I think that played a big part for me. I'd be interested to know what Dean Hammond said on on that question. You have to watch the podcast. Uh, subscribe <laughs> to the Chef United Way. Don't forget to, don't forget to <laughs> hit that bell as well, and uh, you, you get notifications. You can even become a paid-up member. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I'll definitely do that and give it a listen. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put it out there. I am assuming that Chris Wilder uh, was not the manager that you enjoy playing for the most. <laughs> um, so which manager is it? Um, 
to take the Sheffield United season out of there and Adkins would have been up there because like I say, we we'd got we I'd had huge success out of him and, and like I say from 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 how the, the chain of events of my career went for for going from part-time football to York as, as the first full-time club and then jumping up into League One and then in that very first season getting promoted to the Championship, I, I've got to have huge admiration and, and again, thanks for the manager at that because he, he signed me um, he signed me from um, from the conference into League One and then got us promoted, which, which we, uh, again, a played a big part in and um and yeah there's there's sort of it has got to be up there for me for that but I, again I, 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 the frustrations were there for me within the Sheffield United year as, as well so but I have got um huge admiration for, for Nigel and what he did for me personally in my career um and then the, the the other one that I possibly say, and and this doesn't go down well with the, the Millwall fans, to to be honest, but I really really enjoy playing under Ian Holloway, um, for a number of different reasons. One is mad as a box of frogs, so it will just <laughs> an absolute banter on the training ground. Such an enjoyable place to be. Um, but two, like I really enjoyed the style of play that he played. He he changed me as a footballer at Millwall. There, I became more of a. Um, uh, a ball playing midfielder um, as opposed to to an out and out winger just for the role I, w- I was playing on the wing under him but the way that he'd got the, the way the rotation works you'd pick up different positions and um, and I did become more of a more of a midfielder um, than, a, than an out and out winger there um, but I just really like, again like I say the, the way that he I mean I found out that while he went out of a job he went he went through to Spain uh, to study how the Spanish kept the ball so well um, and he implemented that straight away the, the, the season when he took over we were dead and buried in the championship and I mean rock bottom sort of uh, we had to win um, something like um, six out of the last eight or something in order to, to have any chance of staying up and and he came in at that point and we did that and he got us instantly playing really good football. Um, and then I think, like I say, the, the, the following season, then we got off to a flying start um, and it were only due to um, a bit of unfortunate injuries in, in certain positions. The, the downside to the system that he played was everybody needed to be singing off the same hymn sheet. Um, and if you had one position that that sort of, sort of weren't doing that, um, it, it kind of breaks down a little bit and, and we got an injury and, and we had no one really there to, to fill the slot and it just snowballed a little then, which again were disappointed for me because he left um, on sort of poor terms with the, with the Millwall fans, but he was someone that I really, really got a lot out of personally. Um, he fetched a lot of other stuff in into the club, which I benefited from massively. Um, the, the sort of outside the box sort of with, uh, with, sports psychology stuff and and things like that which which i really bought into i i really enjoyed and and grasped that so so the whole thing for me there um so so yeah i mean it'd be between those those two um uh, as i say for for different reasons brilliant that's great um we've kept you for ages now so i think uh we we, we really appreciate you for coming on martin and, and telling us your story because there was definitely a story behind uh, behind yourself. Mm. Um, but before we go, what we'd like to do, we've, we're starting doing this with you, so we hope you like this. So <laughs> we are uh, going to send you out a mug for appearing on the Chef United way. I'm just um, going to move this side, Nick. Yeah, I'm going to that way. <laughs> so obviously we can't see Martin. We apologise for that. But uh, the lovely Cheryl uh, from Cartoon U has designed this. So uh, we hope you enjoy it and uh, we'll get it sent out in the next couple of days thank you very much if you let me know if uh, if cheryl's on social media i'll give her a little shout out for that because that's uh, that's class to be fair i love that <laughs> yeah thank brilliant you thank you very much guys and thank you very much cheryl for that one no problem at all we'll uh, yeah we'll I'll, I'll get those on to you after after this martin and um yeah actually this isn't going out for a while is it so uh, we better not shout her out just yet Right, no problem. Then I'll be uh, <laughs> under wraps for, for Nick, a while. Nick, Nick will message you at the perfect time. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I no always problem. do. 
<laughs> no, um, the, the time's not an issue at all. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me on. Um, and and yeah, I hope uh, I hope it goes down well. Like I say, I'm I'm pretty much an open book now. There's there's, there's nothing to to hide or, or shirk around. It, it is what it is. I look back at my career and and even the time at Chef United. I mean, Chef Chef United, I got. Probably the second highlight of my career as a Man United fan. Originally, I got to play at Old Trafford, so there's there's definitely some really really um, good memories to look back at Sheffield United um, in and amongst the sort of few disappointments. So for for me, um, yeah, thanks for thanks for inviting me on, and I say I hope it hope it goes down well for the fans. Well, Martin, if you told me 15 years ago. When oh, I was we're back sat, to the York stuff. We're back to the York stuff. I uh, sat with my mates at Booth and <laughs> Crescent watching your debut that I would be 15 years later giving you a personalised animated mug. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have believed it myself, to be fair. <laughs> so, but yeah. Love 15 it. years as well, that's, uh, yeah. Still Makes you think. I think. I hope I've got my maths right. I am notoriously dreadful at maths, but yeah, it seems... Yeah, it will be, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, man. Thank, well, you're the one that's you know done the degree in civil engineering, so I'm definitely going to say you know what you're talking about. Where maths way ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, again, like I say, thank you very much, guys. Uh, like I say, it was my pleasure coming on and uh, and speaking to you. So um, so yeah, thank you very much.